Hey, it's Dry Bear. Continuing our series of covering every single weapon in the First Descendant, and today we'll be talking about the ultimate sniper rifle after Glow Sword. Now, as with many of these kind of weapons, there's going to be multiple ways that you can utilize them, and it will change the weighting of the modules and stats on the weapon, depending on how you're going to use it. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video here today. The after Glow Sword is the best sniper rifle that I've tested so far. It easily beats out all of the purple and blue sniper rifles in the game. It is insanely good has incredibly high crit chance and crit damage and has some really interesting options for how it's going to build and honestly just like i said in my sniper rifle video this is something that i would like to see for more weapons in the game that even when you're getting down to the ninth or tenth module in their full build you're still considering some interesting choices depending on what you want to put in the build and not really most weapons can boast this kind of experience when it comes to building here so the theoretical dps here is 1.9 million very very strong it's not quite as bursty as the smithereens, but it also can be done from across the arena rather than right on top of the enemy on a weak point with that condition and that condition alone, which is really nice. And this is actually the build that I would recommend for the Afterglow Sword because it's just going to be good. It, it does include real life fighter. I know some people don't like that as a play style, but I think with a scope and perfect accuracy, these weapons are very easy to hit weak points with and stack real life fighter for that value. But it's not the only way to play Afterglow Sword. We'll go through both those builds the second way is going to be more of a quick swap play style and there's going to be different modules that you can swap in for that so the quick swap play style is going to be a little bit different and then it allows you to switch over to the weapon and it opens up some of the time limited cooldown focused build modules that you don't get a lot of value on if you stay on the weapon for too long in afterglow swords case i would recommend using the quick swap build if you're only planning to stay on the weapon for like three or four shots if you stay longer than that, every second you spend on Afterglow with a quick swap build that's not your main throughput weapon is going to start being less and less damage because you're relying on the insane boost that you get from the, you know, strength and first shot or even like weak point expansion. Those sorts of things end up giving you a lot more value on your time. If you just switch over to the weapon, shoot a couple times when things go on cooldown and you lose your bonuses, you switch off and go back to a normal damage throughput weapon. So you can see that the burst DPS is much higher, but the sustained DPS on this is going to be way lower because we're not prioritizing things like reload magazines or regular firearm attack that we can scale off of we're trying to take advantage of that burst value which honestly makes a lot of sense for a weapon type that has limited ammo count right the fact that you have a limited amount of the high power rounds this kind of makes sense for and if you do plan to go for the normal throughput build you can consider things like the rounds compulsive or maximum rounds expand weapon charge or even recycling genius so that you can have enough rounds to use it for a long period of time now what's great about this weapon is it has a unbelievable base crit rate of 50 percent we haven't gotten to secret guarding yet but that's going to be in the same area and we also have a base crit damage scaling of 200 percent which is awesome the weak point is at base is 1.8 and even though the rounds per magazine is tiny the fire rate is close to one per second which is very very slow we have incredibly high firearm attack and when you re-roll sniper rifles they have a very high value on flat things like bonus first colossi bonus first factions, flat elemental damage, things like that are very high because they shoot so infrequently, which gives us a lot of really good value on that. And we have the aimed accuracy at 100%. You never have to run accuracy on sniper rifles because while you're scoped, all of them have that perfect accuracy. And again, unlike the burst profile of the smithereen shotgun that we talked about yesterday your effective range starts at 55 meters and starts falling off and the unique ability will make that even better on top of that scaling so when this is fully maxed out when you have the nightmare reaper built up and fully maxed out the fire rate will still be minus 10 percent but it still works for a quick swap weapon in that case you get 20 percent effective range none of the stats on your death propagation change and your flat crit rate is 22.5 which a viewer in my chat helped confirm Confirm that this is a multiplicative increase on your base but multiplicative is fine if your base crit rate is 50 percent right this is why crit rate gets devalued on weapons that have 
5, 10, 15, 20, even 25 percent is because you're taking a multiplicative value off that base and makes it much harder to start applying flat crit chance increases because you get so little in return based on how much you have at base. But 50 percent gives us a nice scalar, a nice value on that. And you'll see that in the build as well. So the way the passive works here is that when you hit a weak point and you want to be always aiming for weak points with this weapon, you will get a stacking buff that stacks up to six times. Every time you hit this, you get a reload time modifier, which makes your reloads faster and scales up your weak point damage to a 24% at max when you have all of the stack. So you do get good value to that. And that's why I do recommend the full uptime build of this is because you have built in reload time, which means we don't need recycling genius here. We can actually use reload focus for the extra crit damage on it. And because we have the extra weak point, it makes everything a lot more useful. So the throughput uptime version of Afterglow Sword, I think is the best because then you can switch to it, use all of your high power rounds, and if anything's left alive after the fact, you can switch off and use your other weapons, versus the quick swap version, which is going to be, you're trying to get some quick bursts on some weak point, but I feel like that's a very shotgun launcher kind of thing to do, since it's not really that hard to hit weak points with a sniper rifle, slow fire rate, perfect accuracy, a scope, and very good effective range means you can sit back in another continent and shoot across the arena, get those weak points, and switch back to your weapon, it makes it a lot more reasonable, but I wanted to make a build for both options. If you like that crazy big spike in damage you get with the cooldown focus modules like weak point expansion, strength and first shot, then you can run with this kind of build. But if you want to use it for more than three or four rounds, then I would recommend running the more purest uh, version of the Afterglow Sword. Now, a couple words of caution on this passive. It does only trigger when you're able to hit weak point. And the duration is not like crazy long, but it does give you enough breathing room in order to actually stack the this up and rely on it right so if you hit that weak point you see death point death uh you know death propagation is there but you really don't want these stacks to fall off you want to make sure that you are hitting those weak points it's not real life fighter you're not going to lose a stack if you miss but you really want to keep this stacked up anytime you switch to afterglow sword you want to make sure that you're keeping those stacks alive that you get to the maximum six stacks and you stay there because that's when the main value is going to be because you're going to get a whole bunch of really good value and then that's when you want to reload is while that buff is active to get the reload modifier and you get the extra weak point on it as well which is when this thing starts to skyrocket in damage output you get the weak point scaling as well all of it comes together and makes this weapon really really good but if you hit a weak point and then you miss and miss and then miss all of a sudden you've lost your buff and you lost all those stacks everything goes back to base and that's when it loses some of its value as compared to other options in the burst damage weapon space so when it comes to the quick swap i would run strength and first shot action reaction rifling reinforcement we're not going to be running fire rate here because if you're only going to be shooting a couple times fire rate loses a lot of its value and we don't need to run reload either because we're not going to be reloading as often in combat until we actually need to you can swap this weapon twice before needing to reload which is really nice uh, to get that bonus and the strength and first shot when it's maxed out has a 10 second cooldown better concentration and better insight and concentration priority and insight focus and focus fire all deal with the really high crit chance and crit damage base that we have on this weapon and yes in this case because the crit is so high we're going to run more than one crit chance option i know there's people out there that think that edging shot is a great choice it's really not in almost every situation edging shot is a big loss in dps however in a case like this with a really high crit rate um, if you're not including descendant buffs you actually do get some dps increase it's just nowhere near as good as some of the other options that you have available we want a little bit of weak point here with weak point sight and focus fire adding that together and then we do want to add in our elemental bonus when we look at the re-rolls in the top right corner they're going to be the same between the both and we want to make sure we get bonus versus colossi firearm attack and crit damage and i would say crit chance and flat element damage are quite close together though because this scales up to almost sixteen thousand damage on the sniper rifles flat element damage i think beats out crit chance by a good bit just a little bit actually and then weak point is there and of course because our max rounds is so low we don't get an extra round by having reroll so there's no real reason to run rounds as your reroll there so that is the quick swap option for this if you wanted to you could run some very easy cleanups like uh just some some 
like quick swap, like ex the, the weapon weight. So you can actually maximize weapon weight. You can put your between your weapons and get that swap time down because you're obviously doing no damage while you're swapping unless you swap like when you get a moment hide behind a wall when there's an, an uh, 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 avoidable Colossus attack, that sort of thing. And then we look at the base build here. This is where we're going to start valuing reload and uh, fire rate because we are actually going to be staying on the weapon for more than, you know, three to five shots. We actually want to actually stay on the weapon, use up all of our ammo and get that bonus and then start working on this. In this case, you can consider things like the maximum round compulsive, which allows you to get more high power rounds in storage. Overall, you can also do rounds conversion, take your fourth uh, ammo type that you're not using, which is usually impact or special for some people, depending on what weapons you're running. You can convert that into high power rounds so you can use the weapon more often. And you can see down here that even dropping off reload focus is going to be your lo lowest impact on this build based on the weighting. So you can swap out real focus for something like that uh, just to get extra rounds in there to use it more often if you want. But it's a very similar setup, except in this case, even if we're only getting a real life fighter to three or four stacks, we still get the most value out of any other mod here for the uh, the, the unique special mod setup. Action reaction, raffle reinforcement, better concentration, better insight, weak point sight. And then at the very end, we want commando marksmanship. Again, commando marksmanship beats out the concentration priority in this case because we are reloading. We do care about the reload time so we're going to try and run commander marksmanship instead or even target detection to make sure that we don't impact that reload too much and then reload focus fire rate up make a lot of sense if you're going to be using all of your rounds back to back but that is the afterglow sword two different builds to run here two different play styles both are very awesome this weapon is insanely insanely good and i think that it is worthy of being included in your kit especially if you're playing a burst like stealth sharon build if you found value in today's video leave a like down below leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.